Hello and welcome to From Word to Cool in 45 Minutes and how to supercharge your content with Adobe RoboHub. I'm Stefan Gann, Senior Worldwide Evangelist for Technical Communication at Adobe. And with me in the room is Kevin Siegel, founder and president of Icon Logic. And I guess a lot of you guys know him already. So what are we going to talk about? What do we will talk about today? Uh, we will talk about our show, uh, how to create topics. We will show how to import HTML into RoboHub, how to import Microsoft Word document and what you, how you can improve that, and how to restyle the content. And featuring shortcuts, Sir Ludwig, dirty documents, and much more. So engage, Mr. Ziegel. All right. Thank you, Stephen. So I am speaking to you all from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. Got a great stretch of weather here, and I, I hope the same for each and every one of you. So we're going to get into Adobe RoboHelp and talking about how to get all this awesome content into your project. And listen, I've, I've been using RoboHelp for more than 20 years. And one of the things that's always struck me is it's a great tool, but junk in, junk out. If you don't have content, what do you have? You've got a bunch of pictures, you got a bunch of videos, you got to have content. And those are known as topics in Adobe RoboHelp. So how do you get that content into Adobe RoboHelp? And that is the thrust of this session. Now I'm Kevin Siegel. And I started Icon Logic about 30 years ago. Been using RoboHelp since way, way back. I'm actually one of the original Adobe RoboHelp certified instructors. And above and beyond using the tools since forever, I write books on RoboHelp and many other tools for my company, Icon Logic. And you can see my most recent version of RoboHelp as of the moment is RoboHelp 2020 The Essentials. You can find that book on Amazon or at my website at iconlogic.com. And I've written books on other tools, most uh, notably, in my mind anyway, Adobe Captivate, TechSmith Camtasia, that kind of thing. Now, during this session, Stephen and I are going to walk through the process of creating topics in RoboHelp. Because look, you can, you can make these topics from scratch if you'd like. My personal opinion on that is that's an awesome thing to know how to do, and I'll show you a couple of different ways to do it. But more than anything else, I don't want to be typing all the content myself. I'm hoping I'm going to get that content from someone. And then we get into the what I call the meat and potatoes of how to get content into RoboHelp. Import it, because importing for me a whole lot better than having to type it from scratch. And so when you go to import it, there's multiple ways to bring content in. The more popular ways and the more common ways import or link. So we're going to talk about importing HTML. We're going to talk about importing Microsoft Word documents. And then, only because it's pretty cool that you can do it, linking to Word documents. Of course, Word is one of the most important content authoring formats probably in the world. Um, and uh, there are also a lot of other formats as well, like Technica, Markdown, uh, things like that. And you can even import these kind of formats like Markdown to RoboHub. Uh, but today we really want to focus on Word and HTML, so um, let's have a look at that. Yeah, so I've got a project just for the magic of television, right? I've got a project just about ready to go, and all I have to do now is fire off that create button. So in honor of the day, I'm creating a project called Kevin and Stephen, you know, because we're going on the road, right, Stephen? We're, we're a two-person act here. And I'm just going to title it Kevin and Steven. It's going to be completely blank. And, and here's the thing about this. Steven and I are working without a net, so to speak. So if something goes wrong, something pops up on screen, there's nothing we can do about it. That's just the way it's going to be uh, live, pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. I'm saving the project, by the way, to my default location, my RoboHub project. So I'll go ahead and click Create. And here is an absolute brand new project. Now, one thing that you all should be aware of when you start these new projects is that you do get a topic out of the box. So listen, if your project was only gonna have one topic in it, Stephen, I think we pretty much have solved the problem. You're gonna get a topic by default. All you have to do is double click it and it's gonna open up that topic in this editor window and you could just highlight the headline and I'm gonna type welcome to our world. And then I'll highlight the text here and just type something is all about us. 
us and only us, right, Stephen? <laughs> so there's our first topic. Now, the thing about getting that first topic that you should be aware of is that the first topic is labeled and titled first topic, and that may not be the best name to go with. So I'm going to just highlight this word welcome here and copy it. And I'm going to right click the topic here on the contents panel, and I'm going to choose properties. And now you're going to bring up this topic properties dialog box. And we could spend, Stephen and I, could spend hours just talking about every single thing inside this panel. We won't. We're just going to talk about a few things. The title, I'm going to go ahead and paste. I use my keyboard shortcut to paste Command V on the Mac. By the way, it is worth noting, this is the Macintosh version of Adobe RoboHelp. And the Macintosh and PC versions of RoboHelp are identical, except a couple of the Macintosh menu-specific things that are only on the Mac. That's one thing, but it's a minor thing. Other than that, what I've seen is I've gone back and forth between the Mac version and the PC version as they work the same. So it's kind of awesome. Uh, the uh, file name here, first topic HTM, I'm just going to paste in the name of the topic again. Now, I tend to lowercase my file names here just in case somebody might want to link into this welcome topic using an external tool, an authoring tool. Oftentimes, the if you're going to be typing in the code to reference my topics, it's case sensitive. So I think it's a real good practice to do everything lowercase when it comes to file names. Now, I'm going to click the apply button. You notice that I didn't put Stephen an HTM extension after the file name. And yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess some people are wondering, do you have to put the HTM or do you do HTML? I'm going to click apply and you may have seen it there just in a flash. It went away. I'm going to go back and right click that topic and choose properties. And I love the fact smart software, it puts the HTM in there, which you should also note everyone, you don't need HTML, just do a dot HTM and be done with it. Now, certainly as your experience in RoboHelp grows, you can kind of go through and worry about some of the other topic properties, but not necessary for now. So I'll press cancel here, I made no changes. All right, uh, maybe just one quick pro tip here. It's a good idea to assign the language of the topic because the spell checker will also depend on that. And um, if you want to use uh, the spell checking uh, of Adobe RoboHelp, um, then it's a good idea to set the language to, for example, English US. And I'm doing that right now just to show them. Uh, so English US, Stephen, that's an awesome tip there. I'm gonna click the apply button to get that done. Again, just to talk about that, you right click, you choose properties, you scroll down the topic properties and you've got English right here. So I'll cancel now. All right. So the next thing people typically want to know from me when I teach my RoboHub classes, OK, I've got one topic. How do I get more topics into my project? All right. So you see this plus sign here, right? I'm going to click the plus sign. There is a menu that pops out and one of the options in there is topic. And that brings up that same dialog box, generally speaking, although when I was just inside the one for welcome over here, the dialog box didn't say new topic. It was modifying the properties of an existing topic. Now we're making another new topic. And because this is all about Stephen and myself, uh, I'm going to type in our journey. Did I misspell journey? Uh, you know what? Forget it. I'm, this is what I, I'm going to change. I'm going to change it because that word journey is making me crazy. Now, there you go, everyone. See the magic of television. It was a journey. Now it's an adventure. You see how we work that? So now I, I was fixated on that, Stephen. I couldn't let that go. I was like, now how do you spell journey? Uh, spaces in your file names can be an absolute problem. You put your files up on a web server and the web server sees spaces in those names. Next thing you know, the web server doesn't want to function properly or the browser can't quite figure out how to open up that file because it's got a space so awesome that you don't have to worry about it good idea to uh, have to not have spaces in file names because in the url it looks ugly you get a lot of percentage 20 um replacements of the spaces and things like that cross references might not work or break and difficult to manage so completely second your uh, your statement to have no spaces in file names bottom line it's a bad idea everyone so i'm going to go ahead and click the create button here and here comes our next topic 
And I am not going to be overly concerned with putting any real words in here. I did say content is king, but in a demonstration like this where you're doing stuff on the fly, you can just type anything. The most important thing is relevant for your users. Easy to find, relevant, short and sweet. If I could just have you all do those. More pictures, not less, would really be helpful. For me, as a user, really stressed out trying to get information about whatever. I want to get it quickly, relevant, and easy to read. All right, so we made a topic here, and in the interest of keyboard junkies, there's more than one way to make a topic. So let me give you a keyboard shortcut now is that new topic dialog box up on the screen, and bam, I just got it. And uh, again, magic, because my mouse didn't move. The keyboard shortcut on the Macintosh, Command T. Keyboard shortcut on the PC, Control T. So Command T, Control T. Hey, Stephen, what is the name of your, do you have a, do you have a favorite pet, Stephen? We have two dogs, yeah. Well, tell me the name of your, of your favorite dog. So the one is Ludwig. Oh boy, you couldn't just do Bob, <laughs> right? Ludwig, L-U-D-L-I-W-I-G. Did I get it right? You perfectly got it right, yeah. You'll see what I did there, everyone. We did not rehearse this in advance, but there I go with uh, Sir Ludwig. Uh, oh, let me put, hold on. It's Sir Ludwig, isn't it? Let me put that in there. Sir Ludwig. Uh, I just wanted to show again that the spacing thing is really cool, that it puts the uh, underscore in, and you get with the dot .htm. And I'll click create. Uh, real quick there, Stephen, tell me about Sir Ludwig. He's a boy, pretty young, and I would say he's sort of a teenager right now. <laughs> I got you. Uh, <laughs> because that would have, that's what happens. Now, one thing I want everybody to notice here is, uh, as Stephen and I make topics in this project, that the topics will remain open in their own tabs. Here's the welcome topic. Here's our adventure, which wasn't an adventure at all, as it turns out, and Sir Ludwig, right? What I really see interesting here is that each of them have little asterisks by the name. Stephen, what does the asterisk mean? I bet you don't know. The documents are, as we developers say, dirty. That means they are not in a saved state. I have never heard, I have never <laughs> heard an unsaved file be, being dirty. referred to dirty. as dirty. Uh, yes, you all with your filthy, dirty topics. Uh, by the way, Stephen, I did put the word filthy in there. I did editorialize a little bit. Uh, but I tend to say that the files have not been saved, but I love the fact that you consider them dirty. Now, this little thing right here, does anybody even know what that is, what that little picture is supposed to be? It means save, and I understand why they're using a disk, because how would you represent save as an icon? Now, just the word save. So you hit that little disk icon. The, the thing about saving is when I hit the save icon, it does say save all, and what does that mean? Well, it certainly does mean save all three of the unsaved topics at one shot. That's awesome. But the whole thing being managed here is an RHPJ file, a RoboHelp project file. So when you save, you save everything. And I think that's important because more than one developer has told me, you know, I, ha I had a broken link in my project. I fixed the broken link and still showing as a broken link. What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, you're going to laugh. Only they're not going to laugh. They're going to cry. All that extra time fixing what you thought was broken was fixed the first time. And all you had to do was click save. And not only do, uh, does um, RoboHelp save unsaved topics or dirty topics, it saves the project file itself, which updates the database. So save all the time. And, and people have asked me, uh, how often should I save? Well, how often do you want to redo anything? So if you've done something, even if I would consider it trivial, might be a good idea to save. So now if you right click your topics, you can choose close all to clean up this right hand side of the screen if it's bothering you that multiple topics are open. That is making topics. Now, the next thing I want to do is import content. So if you right click your contents area and you come down to import, I'm going to choose file. But as Stephen was saying earlier, FrameMaker is available. And, and listen, I love FrameMaker. If you've never heard of FrameMaker, I imagine many of you have basically with the, with the people who typically attend this, this particular conference, 
But FrameMaker to me is Microsoft Word if Microsoft Word were a perfect program. So FrameMaker to me is Microsoft Word on the safe version of steroids. It is just an awesome tool. And I write all of my books in FrameMaker. And I tried FrameMaker and I never went back. Okay, and this is from a Microsoft Word fan and from a Quark Express fan. So give FrameMaker a shot if you never have. And the bottom line there is, if you do a lot of work in FrameMaker, FrameMaker outputs directly to RoboHelp. It's just awesome, so give it a shot. We're gonna choose file, uh, HTML topic, I should say. And I'm gonna navigate to my desktop, and I already have a folder ready to go. Once again, uh, the magic of television, right? I've got something uh, ready to go. I've got a folder called topic content, and any of the files here that are not grayed out are HTML files ready to bring in. So I'm gonna just select absence. Now I can sort by name to make it a little more alphabetical. That would be nice. So here's absence.htm. I'm gonna go ahead and click open. And it says in the bottom right, this little pop-up window, which goes away on its own, that absentee policy has been bought in. Here it is. It's already got the title, already got the file name. I could bring up its properties and I could change either one if I wanted to but it's doing some of the best practices that Stephen and I already talked about. So I'll cancel that. I'll open it up. It's gonna open up in this authoring area over on the right. Now, the one thing that it doesn't do when you bring in an HTML file, I, I like to use the term junk in, junk out. Whoever gave you this HTML file, if they didn't check their spelling and do all their grammar tools and all that fun stuff, you're gonna have grammatical problems here. And if the person who gave you the topic didn't format the HTML with the heading ones through the heading sixes, RoboHub doesn't know what the headings are supposed to be. So that first topic, absentee policy there, was never assigned a heading one. So if the person who gave you the content didn't do it, then you have to do it. And how do you do that? Uh, and actually, I do have to assign the cascading style sheet to it first. So I'm going to come here and come to my style sheets, and I'm going to select um, the default cascading style sheet. And now I can come back to my Superman symbol here, and I see all of my styles are available. So there's my heading one. So uh, real simple to do with any topic that you have. And if you have a bunch of topics, it's possible to bring what is called a topic list and assign cascading style sheets to multiple topics at the same time if you want. Now I'm gonna save my work because I've done something good here. I imported the topic. Uh, the asterisk indicates I haven't saved, so I'm just pressing Command S. I'll try to verbalize when I'm doing that because I'm all into my keyboard shortcuts and I don't want something to happen on screen like in a blink and you kind of go, what just happened? All right, so that's one topic. Now, Stephen, isn't it true that when you go to bring in topics like I bought in absentee policy, if I've got 7,222 topics, I have to go uh, right click, import HTML topic 7,222 times, correct? I got to do it one at a time, right? Of course not, Kevin. <laughs> oh, all right, well, uh, all right, so I'm going to right click again. I was trying to trick Steven and he's just, he's just not falling for it. All right, HTML topic with a right click. Uh, and this time I'm gonna select conflict, overtime, payroll, pets. What I'm doing here is I am pressing my command key to skip over non-contiguous files, right? So I'm just pressing the command key and clicking. Uh, on the PC, that would be the control key. Uh, and I'm gonna click open. Uh, it says that the topics were imported. Everything comes in, and now I've got my 401k plan here. And once again, the topic comes in. This product doesn't know the heading ones from the heading twos from normal text. I am going to save my work because the database is now increased significantly with all this new content. But that is an awesome way to bring in content. By the way, if I go to the view menu and I choose topic list, here I can see all of my topics, and if I select them all and uh, right click now any one of them and choose properties, it says multiple topic properties here. And I come down and I can select the language to English. Uh, for me, it's gonna be uh, English US. Stephen mentioned that, and that's really important. 
And lower down, remember I told you, you could spend all day looking at stuff in this drop down menu. Well, here we are doing a couple of them. There's a style sheets area. And I'll come to this drop down menu and I'll choose default.css and click apply. And it's doing it for all of them. So now if I open up my 401k plan topic, it's now using the styles from the cascading style sheet. And at this point, I go to my style tool uh, and I'll choose heading one from the list of styles. By the way, I'm gonna try this, Stephen. Yeah, so it was like control shift two or something like that. Now I gotta go look it up. There is a list of keyboard shortcuts, by the way, that you can get from the Adobe website. And I remember seeing it, but now of course, when the pressure's on, I've forgotten it. But okay, I'm doing it the old fashioned way. Go ahead and assigning the CSS. I do wanna show you all just right quick that uh, if you are unhappy with the appearance of your styles, don't forget that I'm using the style called default.css in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my assets here. I'm gonna go inside CSS. I'm gonna open up default.css. I'm gonna open up paragraph styles. Oh, not paragraph styles, heading styles. They've regrouped this, by the way, in a recent update that the heading styles have been pulled out of paragraph styles now that they're on category. I love that. Come over here to heading one, go to font, and I'm just gonna change the font color to a nice dark blue and click apply save, close the CSS, and all of my heading ones now are dark blue. I'm gonna go back and do the same thing now for my heading twos, which we get all these. I'll make them a red so it's really easy to see on screen. That might not be obvious, that became a dark blue. So I'm gonna double click default.css, open up my heading styles, select heading two, come down here to font color, and a nice dark red, and apply and save, close the CSS. Just You don't have to close it, but I like to, I'm a little, uh, maybe a little OCD. I gotta close it before I go check out what it did. And clearly now you can see the heading twos. And what I love about this is because I've assigned that default.css to, to all my topics, the welcome topic, which uh, using heading one has the blue headline and uh, Sir Ludwig, which is a topic we created earlier, has the blue headline. It's all good to go. So uh, what have we done there, Stephen? Bought in one HTML topic, bought in several HTML topics, applied cascading style sheets to a bunch of topics. And then on top of that, Stephen, we modified the cascading style sheet. Are we done yet, Stephen? Um. Command option one two three four five six. These are the shortcuts. Oh, the look at Steven now coming through with the keyboard shortcuts. So hold on a second. Let me put this back to just plain old boring text here, right? So just to body text. Whoops. Uh, let me make another topic here and test this. Open up T policy, and uh, I would like this to be a heading two. All right, so what's the keyboard shortcut, Stephen? Command, option, and then one or two or three, depending on- There it is. I couldn't remember, but I was pressing command shift two, is command option two. Yeah. So we're gonna make us a, uh, a request of Stephen for to Adobe to change the keyboard shortcut to command shift two, because I can't remember command <laughs> option two. Uh, my, my, I suspect they're not gonna do it. So it's command option two, it does work. So um, command option three, is heading level three. Command option one is heading level one. Command option two, heading level two. Are you guys impressed yet? I knew it was in there somewhere. I just couldn't remember the full keyboard shortcut. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and save and get rid of this stuff here. It's pretty useful, uh, these shortcuts, if you have to reformat or restructure a lot of content and uh, don't want to move with the mouse forth and back uh, between the style panel. Right. Content, so it's pretty useful for this kind of work. Absolutely. All right. So, Stephen, I was totally kidding when I said, are we done? And then you came up with a keyboard shortcut because I showed you how to bring in HTML topics. But what about Word? So let me go to my desktop here so you can see my uh, my messy desktop. 
I uh, uh, let me. Uh, I was trying to show my desktop. I'll get there. So here's the uh, robo help folder that I'm working in right now. And inside that robo help folder, I have inside uh, topic content, I have a uh, document here called substance abuse. So I'm opening it up right now. So other than the little spinning beach ball, it's open. That's good. So I'm going to press enter after this one topic. And um, Stephen, tell me something that you might become addicted to in life. What if you become addicted to? Keep it clean. That's all I ask. And it could be something good, Stephen. It doesn't have to be something dark. So what is it good that you become addicted to? Because I'm going to tell you something that I become addicted to. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. Golf. Well, okay. uh, yeah, my, let's see. Uh, I have actually become quite good. Hardest sport ever. Uh, now, and I'm going to press enter again. Stephen, what are you addicted to? When it comes to sports, definitely swimming. Swimming. That is such a tiring sport and very wet. <laughs> you, you happy the way I jumped in there, Stephen, and let you, let you not even defend swimming? So, I mean, Stephen, the, how many laps can you do consecutively before you're so exhausted you want to get out of the pool? On oh, a 50-meter pool, like 100 laps. Okay, so, Stephen, I think I can do a half a lap, and then I just want to get out of the pool. And you know why I want to get out of the pool? I want to go golfing, Stephen. That's what I want to do. So, uh, look, I want to cl click on this word golf, and I'm going to assign heading level one. And then I'm going to click on the word swimming, and I'm going to apply heading level one. Now, you see what I did there, everyone? I'm using Microsoft Word style pane, real simple. What I am not concerned with is how the text look. What I am concerned with is formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and show my non-printing symbols. And one thing that I, that I want everybody to realize is that when I hit these non-printing symbols, do you see in this paragraph here, this little funky looking backwards looking peak. That means end of the paragraph. And what I really want to discourage you from doing is pressing extra returns to try to add vertical white space between your paragraphs. There are features in a cascading style sheet that will put the paragraph space above and below text. So don't overly concern yourself with spreading out your text here so it's easier for you to read when you're getting ready to bring this into RoboHelp. What we like to say is bring in clean, I would say non-dirty documents, but that would mess up Stephen's whole discussion on dirty topics are not saved. So for me, clean Microsoft Word documents, meaning don't have extra carriage returns in there. If you've got graphics, don't have them grouped. Actually, it would be better to convert your groups into images in Word before you ever bring them into RoboHub, because think about this for a second. You're talking about an Adobe product and a Microsoft product, and the fact that they work together at all, for me, was like thumbs up. I love it that those two companies kind of communicated with each other. But there are irreconcilable differences there. So let's try to keep the formatting in your Word document as vanilla, I'm using air quotes now, as possible before you bring that stuff into RoboHub. So, uh, make your groups images. Don't use carriage returns. And if you're going to format text, you should use character styles or paragraph styles because RoboHelp and Word support them. What you don't want to do is highlight a word and start using manual overrides like I just did with the word difficulties there, right? And I'm going to make the uh, word enter here underline. And I'm going to make this word Bigger, 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 bigger. You see what I'm doing here, Stephen? Making an absolute hot mess. Comma, 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 comma. Make the word smaller. Do you see what I did there? That is not a good thing <laughs> because uh, all of that formatting for this little itty bitty word to make it that font size are going to come in as inline styles in RoboHelp. So look, can you fix it in RoboHelp? Yes. But why would you want to go through that? Because you can do this. I'm going to show everybody this. I'm going to select all and on my keyboard, Hold on, got the wrong keystroke. Uh, control space, thank you. And that takes out all the manual overrides in your document and makes them 
follow the pure intent of the style. That is awesome. You control space wipes out all the formatting. If we could hear anybody watching the recording of this, Stephen, they'd be going ooh and ah right now. That's what they'd be saying, ooh and ah, because they love that. Uh, you will notice that there are misspelled words in my topic, and this is going to be a misspelled word if I bring it into RoboHop, so I might spell check it there. But you know what? Microsoft Word, if you don't go with Grammarly, has some grammar tools, readability statistics. Certainly, you can right-click and spell check on the fly. So I do recommend if you find typographic errors or grammatical errors, this thing's saying put a comma in, you could argue the use of commas and too much all, all you want. It's also got some recommendations for some wording here. You can decide whether or not you want to fix it. The bottom line is make your documents as clean as possible before you bring them in. Now, this document was called Substance Abuse, and Stephen and I add our own addictive things here. You could do anything you want. I'm, I, I, before I save and close, I just want you all to notice that the, um, the heading style, heading one was used four times, alcohol, drug, golf, and swimming, okay? So I'm saving, I'm quitting, and I'm returning to RoboHelp. All right, back in RoboHelp, I'm gonna close all my topics. Again, just to clean up this right-hand interface. And I right-click, I choose import, this time I choose Word document. I'm gonna load up the Word document right here by choosing select Word document. I'm gonna to navigate to my topic content and the file I was just working in, if I go to date modified, is this one called substance abuse. I'm gonna open it up. It's loaded it already. Uh, now, what, uh, what do I wanna do with these styles? Uh, I come to the drop down menu and it says start a new topic from a style what style I'll choose heading one. So that was kind of cool that RoboHelp sees only the styles that were being used to, to keep things from getting a little too complicated. And it's gonna bring in my heading one style and I'm gonna go ahead, uh, notice it says, by the way, gonna use default.css, I'll click import. And uh, so don't forget that there was drug policy there was golf and there was swimming. Now, uh, I'm going to reapply the style, actually, because I'm noticing that um, it's got the right font color, but it's not using the, um, the actual style. And I see why. So if you take a look here on the um, topic properties, it's actually RoboHop's assigning two cascading style sheets at the same time. That's like having two brains in your head. You got two brains in your head. One says go left, one says go right. You can see just what the utter confusion is gonna be in your poor body. I'm gonna get rid of the one called substance abuse. And you see the second I do that, it applies the formatting correctly. So that's something interesting just to kind of pay attention to. So the last thing I wanna show you all is how to bring in a Word document, this time by linking. So let me go back and open up holiday schedule now in Microsoft Word. Hopefully it opens up a little bit quicker this time. So you can see here a fully formatted document uh, with uh, 2021, 2022, 2023, right, as my dates. And this is just a holiday schedule for this fake company. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, close the document. And back in RoboHelp, this time I'm gonna right click link to a file. And this time I'm gonna find that holiday schedule and open it. And you see here, this little funny icon to the left of the document, that is telling me that that is basically talking to a file and it's all in sync, but I don't have my content yet. So I'm gonna right click the document and I'm gonna choose create update topics. And the second I do that, I get this folder here and inside the folder is my holiday schedule document that came directly from RoboHelp. Now that linking technology is so awesome from my perspective. If you're working with a subject matter expert and the content is possibly a moving target, meaning it's changing all the time. Just as an example, we have decided 
that in 2022, we're going to change New Year's Eve not to be January 1st, but to be January 8th. And the subject matter expert has made that determination. I know this is nonsensical and far-fetched, but let's just go with it, okay? So I'm going to go back to Microsoft Word. I'm going to force it because it didn't want to. And I'm going to reopen that holiday schedule document. Now, in this workflow, let's just pretend that Stephen is the RoboHelp author. He's awesome, but he's not the content curator. I am. And he is bringing in that Microsoft Word document from a server. And Stephen, you and I hardly ever communicate about the content. All I know is, is I give you the content and you use it. I've heard about you, Stephen. I heard you're a good guy, but we don't at all. We've never met in person, okay? So here I am now in, in 2022, January the 8th needs to become January the, I forget what I said, the 9th, okay? Making this up. Uh, let's see, July 4th, we're going to change the, um, the holiday to July the 5th this year. Why not? Uh, and, and, um, and the Christmas break, uh, you know, we'll leave that alone. But Veterans Day, we're going to make it uh, a little extended. We're going to go 11th through the 13th. How awesome is that going to be? A couple of extra days to honor our veterans. So mm -hmm. I'm going to save. I'm going to close. And back in RoboHelp. Stephen, how would a RoboHelp author have any idea that the subject matter expert has updated that content behind their back? Hmm, let me think. Hmm. Maybe it's the red arrow? Yeah, if you look at the holiday schedule document, there now is a red icon next to it, a red arrow. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose create update. It's a toggle, one or the other. It's going to go out and find the new content. You can see that the icon now turns green again and take a look at my updated content January the 9th and my Veterans Day extended and Labor Day has changed. For me, that is such an awesome workflow. And uh, one thing that you definitely want to have the discipline to do. So remember, in this instance, Stephen was the RoboHelp author. I'm the content cre uh, curator, so I own that content. What Stephen wants to avoid doing is coming into this content and making changes to it. Because if he makes changes to it on his end, and then he sees a red icon over here and brings in my changes, we've got irreconcilable differences here. And what's going to happen is Stephen's going to lose all his changes, which very well would have been relevant, but he, he and I did not communicate, and now he's lost his changes. So what I, what I tend to tell people to do if you're going to have content on that contents panel that is likely to change a moving target, make a folder called uh, shared content or something so that you don't go in there and edit it unless absolutely necessary. All right, Stephen, I have now taught this group all the cool things that I meant to teach them. I have to manually go back to PowerPoint. Sometimes the Mac, man, I love it, but it just doesn't want to cooperate. So just as a review, we made topics from scratch, a couple of them, and I showed you keyboard shortcut for that. Remember, <sighs> Command T. We imported HTML, and you learned with Stephen's 25 billion topics, you don't have to bring them in one at a time. You can mass produce, mass import. We imported Word documents. Uh, the big takeaway there was use, use your styles, heading and character, and control spacebar to make the document clean before you bring it in, strip out all the manual formatting. And then we linked back to original source documentation. Stephen, what do you think? Awesome overview, I think. Um, of course, there is a myriad of other, other things in RoboHelp you can do with RoboHelp, um, but uh, we wanted to focus on this today, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm still here in the chat, uh, so uh, please feel encouraged to ask me some questions, and I will be happy to answer them. And uh, with that, we're at the end of this uh, session already, and um, maybe you can put, a, put your contact slide on here, um, uh, Kevin. I know we talked different in the beginning, but um, due to the time, maybe you can... 
Exactly. Thank you. Uh, so if you um, would like to get into contact with Kevin Zigo, uh, please reach out to him at kzigo at iconlogic.com. You will find him, of course, on LinkedIn, and he has a nice blog with uh, interesting content. Um, and of course, a YouTube channel and, of course, a Twitter channel. So you're pretty much everywhere, Kevin, right? I'm everywhere. I'm, every <laughs> I'm like a fungus. I'm everywhere. Thanks so much, uh, Kevin, for joining me today um, for this presentation at STC Summit uh, 2021. And uh, it was a lot of fun to go through the session with you. And I hope the audience will have enjoyed that uh, recording uh, session here as well. And with that, I say thank you and goodbye, everyone. Thank you.